Today I'm showing the book Art and Visual Perception by Rudolf Arnheim. Art and Visual Perception, A Psychology of the Creative Eye. Creative Eye. And uh, Rudolf Arnheim was a psychologist who studied in Germany and then he came to the States and continued his studies and teaching. Um, he applied psychology to the visual arts. He spent, I believe, over a decade researching and preparing to write this book. So a, a lot of his life, and this was also quite a bit after he had spent many years uh, as a psychologist in teaching as well. So uh, there's so much information in this book, I almost don't know where to start. And I have to admit, I'm only halfway through this book. But I've spent over three months reading it so far, and I just couldn't wait any longer to share it with you. So maybe I'll do a part two when I'm finally through the whole thing. But uh, the book reads, it's not really a light read that you would, you know, read on the beach somewhere in a weekend. It's like I said, I've spent, I'm a pretty fast reader, and I've spent over three months so far, uh, about a chapter a month and uh, the chapters are just so chock full of information that uh, I just don't feel like it's a book that you can just breeze through. It really needs to be studied and digested in bits and pieces and um, maybe even applied and observed and then uh, kind of take the next step. And uh, I've just, you know, I'm also taking ballet classes. I was a gymnast when I was younger and took a little bit of dance. I always wanted to take dance. And now I'm taking ballet and I thought, oh yeah, within six months, you know, maybe you can get on point shoes. But you know, it takes years of practice uh, to learn small techniques in a subject like ballet. And it's pretty much the same with a lot of the the things I'm learning in this book. Um, there's been other things I've been able to pick up really quickly. Um, swimming is one of them. And still, even with swimming, uh, you can always keep improving, but there are some things that are, I think, even more, ballet is one of them that's so technical. And I also think the arts can be that way, that there's just so, much uh, that you can learn and uh, that it's almost like an infinity, like more than in one lifetime uh, of knowledge out there to be gained and uh, mastered. So uh, the book has chapters like balance, shape, color, form, space, light, growth, and there are a lot of figures in the book, and um, I'll show some photos, uh, maybe I'll over uh, view with the photos, uh, just because I'm, it's going to be hard to see from, from where I'm talking, but uh, he talks also about um, musical composition and uh, how it's similar in some ways to the arts as far as harmony and uh, there's even mathematical equations in this book. Um, I mean it's very te technical. Uh, I found um, it interesting that he, used, he refers to a lot of classical art from the Renaissance and uh, people that I don't think had the science behind why they did things a certain way, maybe composed or used certain colors in certain areas of a painting. But uh, Rudolf is able to explain uh, the importance of what they did. And like I said, I don't know if they even knew the science behind what they were doing. So it, I feel it's really a treasure to have uh, both, to have the masterpiece and then to have his science behind why it works the way it does and he can kind of explain that and uh, so that's um, to me really valuable uh, so uh, a lot of 
things in the book have to do with our brain and our eyesight and how even like a brain damaged person um, if they have a blind spot now where maybe something's missing if they saw like a body and part of the face was missing they would fill that in uh, their brain would literally think everything's fine and um, it reminds me of a I watched the movie once with Val Kilmer and he played a it was based on a true story he played a blind person who got his sight back but um, he didn't understand his eyesight because he he was born blind so he didn't understand the way the world worked when he got sight and um, he was still more reliant on sound and touch and uh, then he ended up losing his sight again it only lasted for a little bit like I don't know maybe a couple years I'm not exactly sure but it wasn't very long and um, I also am reminded how I grew up in a city environment and uh, my husband had grown up in Idaho and Wyoming and he can see things that I can't um, when I'm like he can see wildlife on a mountainside and I even with binoculars it takes me a long time before um, I can figure out what it is but he can spot things and um, like his brain just registers right away like almost like a wild animal I feel because I can't even my brain doesn't understand what that is when I look at it. Even when I'm looking through a binocular, my brain's playing tricks with me because it doesn't know the difference between the tree and the wildlife on the hill. And um, I have to uh, work a lot harder to find the an animals. And uh, some, some of them are easier than others, but uh, it happens enough that I've noticed. And then I've noticed also I'll see things um, when we're in a city that he doesn't see. Uh, some, for example, just signs like a, like Target or um, a Home Depot sign or something that you know. Just let's see, we're driving, and um, I just point it out like it's maybe a half mile ahead even, and I can just make out it's very very tiny. But I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. He's like, what are you talking about? I don't see it. And then it's like literally we're right under it and then he's like oh yeah now we're here um, so I've just noticed some of those differences in our brains and uh, how our brains are trained in that way and um, they're trained uh, to uh, survive in the world around us and so this book's interesting as far as what's acceptable what's pleasing in art and um, using this book I think can help to really expand if you're an artist I think the value of this book would be to not only understand why certain things work in art and certain things um, don't work as well uh, without having to go through maybe a lot of trial and error that uh, the old masters had to it can all it just helps I think with art appreciation and why um, if you understand some of these rules and principles that uh, you would be able to uh, appreciate more about a piece of art and uh, because I think um, even me going to see great works of art uh, for example, he talks about how Titian and some of these very, um, it looks like very complex art, but uh, some of the people that are experts that are quoted in this book say that is actually some of the more simple art. And uh, he asks, so why would something that looks so complicated, um, this expert says it's actually quite simple. It's because uh, he breaks down, um, this is in the, I think, the chapter on, uh, is it 
Put on balance. How uh, everything uh, should have no more than needed, but no less either. And to find that perfect equation is uh, really the key. And so even if something seems super busy and complex, that might be, um, it might still be in its simplest form. And that's what he was referring to. But you could also have something that looks, a piece of art that looks quite simple, but is really um, actually inefficient and uh, has a lot of waste in it. <laughs> So to speak maybe wasted energy or wasted um, things that aren't necessary and um, so that's something that I find interesting in this book and so for me when I'm thinking of waste I think of something like maybe embellished um, frivolous type I don't want to um, judge any art like some people said Thomas Kincaid was kind of that way like really fluffy but not substantial art he had a lot of critics I don't want to criticize him I when I first saw his work um, my heart just was warmed by uh, what he was trying to convey with like a warm hearth fire and I think I saw a winter scene and then you saw the glow and I got the feeling from that that it was like a burning in my heart like um, a nostalgic feeling and a comforting feeling and I think that that's a gift that he gave and it I see how it's not maybe progressive or um, and maybe it got too commercial but I think for a lot of people um, they really appreciate what he had to offer so I don't want to judge even that but I can see how maybe that or like a Liberace uh, piano piece which basically he's just taking uh, a song and uh, putting a lot of uh, ups and downs, the you know a lot of runs in it, and just uh, maybe a lot of excess that's um, to try to f busy it up. And it kind of went with his style, with his uh, pianos that were like rhinestone and his gaudy outfits. So. Um, that might be what you would consider too much um, and to uh, find the simplified form of something. Um, so I'm just rambling on here. This, those weren't even examples in this book. I'm just uh, adding my own two cents here. Uh, but he does show some examples here of art like Christ in the temple and um, I'll show you a drawing of it figure 69 and um, how there's a balance in this and um, so much meaning uh, just and pleasing to the eye he also shows above it Cezanne's uncle Dominic and he has a line drawn through it to show how um, the hand well what he says here is the unifying power of consistent form is used symbolically in Cezanne's Uncle Dominic. The crossed arms seem chained in their position as though they could never come apart. This effect is achieved partly by fastening the border of the sleeve to the central vertical established by the symmetry of the, fact of the face and the cross. Thus the powerful connection between a man's mind and the symbol of the faith to which his thought is dedicated constrains the physical activity of his body and creates the stillness of collected energy. So, as you can see, that one paragraph, uh, so this is an entire book full of teachings like that. And so, um, if you are interested, if you're a visual artist, for one, um, I think this is a must read. Uh, and if you are just uh, someone who collects art or appreciates art, um, especially fine art, uh, I think this is also uh, an important work to have in your library uh, because it's um, it will explain. I, I mean, I think you would be able to go to any museum afterwards and be able to uh, get a lot more out of the art just by understanding. Uh, it's kind of like a behind the scenes to me. Um, I know, for example, 
by playing an instrument, by taking dance lessons. I really, I mean, I saw the Nutcracker as a kid, a lot of people did, but when you actually take the ballet classes and you know how hard it is to do what they're doing, or you play an instrument and then you go see a symphony, uh, you really have more of an appreciation. And by reading a book like this, even if you don't ever paint a picture in your life, you're going to have more of an appreciation for what you're seeing. And also I think being able to, let's say you're an art collector, uh, I think this a book like this would help you to realize a masterpiece of or just something that's um, erroneous and um, not fraudulent, but um, just not substantial as a work of art. Um, so I think that's something that could be valuable about this book. It's full of knowledge that um, this man dedicated um, his life to and I'm really glad that he did. And um, so the book again is Art and Visual Perception. The author is Rudolf Arnheim. Thank you.